Michael J. Burns here on this Monday. This is March the 13th, 2023. Can you believe it already? Man, time is flying by. and We're getting closer and closer to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm excited to be with you here for another week on God's healing word. You know, we got started a couple minutes late today because I just got back from Texas. I was down there celebrating my youngest beautiful sister Susan's 60th birthday party and I helped my 82 year old mother drive down there we had a wonderful time of fellowship and sharing in the things of God it was wonderful and so I got back just this afternoon and I picked my wife up at work and uh, just very very busy <laughs> as I'm sure your lives are busy as well anyway we're going to begin tonight to talk about something from my book and I want to show it to you here. This is the book here called Discover the Life uh, You Were Born to Live. I've been encouraging you to get this book. We have it as a, hard, uh, as a soft cover book, or you can buy it as a digital book on iTunes or iBooks and all the other digital platforms. But it's called Discover the Life You Were Born to Live, Dare to Make a Difference. And I'm going to be reading from the final chapter and talking about today, Absolute Victory. And I'm going to be sharing some really, really wonderful truths. Unfortunately, tonight, I don't have any real slides to show you. Uh, I'm just going to be reading from the book, but we'll have a couple of different camera angles on it. But I really hope you'll stay tuned and listen to this because the truths that are found in this chapter are absolutely phenomenal. And I want you to understand these things because they will help you in your walk with God. And you that need healing in your body, I'm telling you right now, the things I share in this chapter will be life transforming for you. Praise God. So let's have a word of prayer right now. And uh, we just want to take time to pray. Father, we come before you for a brand new week here on God's healing word. We're in our seventh year, Father, and you know that. And I, I'm not sure everybody who watches knows, but well, we've been doing this for quite some time because your word is so full and so true. And we can never exhaust the revelation that exists in the Word of God, the Bible. And so by the help of the Holy Spirit, we're looking to you. And I'm asking him to think through my mind and speak through my lips and my vocal cords to these, your people. I'm asking you, Father, that the Holy Ghost would cause each ear of each person to them to listen, their minds to be open and their hearts to be receptive to the things of the Word and of the mighty Holy Spirit of God. And I'm asking for revelation to flow freely, Father God, in the word that will go forth tonight. And we welcome the supernatural gifts and the confirmations of the Holy Ghost in this broadcast tonight. And we thank you, Father God, for everything that will be said, everything that will be done, everything that will be revealed and manifested in this broadcast tonight. And we give you covenant now. We covenant with you now to give you all the glory, praise, and honor, and the thanks for it in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. Well, glory to God, we're going to get into this teaching today. And I know you're not going to want to miss one part of it because it's going to be rich and it's going to be great and true. By the way, let me just encourage you to visit if you have, when you have time, our website right here, www.mjbministries.org. And I've been dealing with our uh, our website host company, Share Faith, because when I post the broadcast, I rebrod repost them, and you know when we get done every day, I rebroadcast, repro repost them on seven platforms, including YouTube, Facebook. We have three platforms there. Uh, on Twitter, Getter, LinkedIn, and Truth Social, that it tells me on the Facebook one that this account has been suspended. But it's not true. If you click on that link, it will take you right to our website. And so we're trying to get SharePoint to figure out what happened, and we sent him a, a request for help, and hopefully after tonight, it'll be uh, it'll, it'll work. And so we'll let you know more about that tomorrow night if we're having the same issue. We will speak to them tomorrow as you know, I've been in Texas, and so it's been a little difficult uh, to make contact with them. Praise the Lord. Let me enjoy your attention to John, the 16th chapter, and verse number 11. And I'm going to read this to you from the Amplified Bible. As I told you, I'm not going to have uh, any, uh, what do you call it, any um, slides to show you tonight. I'm just going to read from the book. 
It's my book, as I showed you, called Discover the Life. You were born to live, didn't make a difference. And uh, this book here will be a great blessing to you. It's available on our website, mjbministries.org, uh, under resources. And uh, you can also download a digital version of it from your favorite digital bookstore, <clears throat> which I believe we have there as well. Now, let me read from John 16 and verse number 11. And this is what it basically says here. And Jesus is speaking, and from the Amplified Version of the Bible, John 16 11, he says, he'll, we talked about how the Holy Spirit will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. We talked about sin, we talked about righteousness, and now we're going to talk about judgment. And this is what I wrote here about judgment. This is a quote from John 16 11 in the Amplified. Jesus said about judgment, because the ruler, the evil genius and prince, of this world, Satan is judged and condemned and sentenced already uh, is passed upon him. Now, listen, these powerful words from the lips of Jesus have been incorrectly uh, interpreted to mean that there is an impending judgment coming upon the world. <clears throat> the fact is, Jesus is referring to the judgment upon the prince of this world. Who is this prince? This is a reference to none other than Satan, the devil, the prince of darkness, or the evil genius, as he is otherwise known. Now, uh, this is the third thing that Jesus said in John 16, <clears throat> verses 9 through 11, that the Holy Spirit would convince the world about. Sadly, too many uh, have been convinced about what Jesus meant here incorrectly. Remember what Jesus said in John 16, 8, when he, <clears throat> when the helpers come, uh, comes, he will show the people of the world how wrong they are about sin, about being right with God, and about judgment. The judgment Jesus mentioned has already occurred. It happened when Jesus was crucified and then raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father. Romans 6, 4 declares that. Now, we are told in Colossians 2, 15, and I'm reading from the easy-to-read version, he defeated the, the rulers and powers of the spiritual world with the cross. He won the victory over them and led them away as defeated and powerless prisoners for the whole world to see. You know, I'm going to just take a break in from what I'm reading, and, and I want to read this part again from Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, from the easy-to-read version. Uh, it says, He defeated, it's all about Jesus, defeated the rulers and powers of the spiritual world. With the cross, he won the victory over them and led them away as defeated, listen, and powerless prisoners for the whole world to see. Notice Colossians 2.15 from the Message Bible. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. This was a mighty victory, listen, that left the devil's kingdom humiliated and powerless against the informed believer in Christ Jesus. Can I get an amen? Absolute victory is possible. Amen. Now, uh, for, it is possible for you, but for that to occur, you need to grasp the reality of the spiritual dynamics in life. People laugh when you mention the devil. They think of a little guy in a red suit with horns on his head, a pitchfork in his hand, and a tail with an arrow on the end of it. The Apostle Paul refers to Satan as the God, lowercase g, of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. What is he talking about? Well, Satan used to be known as Lucifer, uh, and he was a covering cherub of one of three archangels. He, along with Gabriel and Michael, were the highest-ranking angels in heaven. His function was to be the lead worshiper uh, in heaven. Now, Ezekiel 28, verses 12 through 19, 
tell us and he reveals that he was a created being, as all angels are. And he was created with music inside of him. He was a beautiful specimen of God's creation until iniquity was found in him. Is it any wonder that since his excommunication from heaven, that he has used music to corrupt the world? Thankfully, the church has been taking it back from him. Now, when God created the earth, listen to this, and he placed... Uh, did his man on it, God's purpose was for loving fellowship with his creation. That's us. God did not create pre-programmed robots, but took the calculated risk uh, of giving his man a free will to choose. God allowed man's will to be tested with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Along with that, he gave man a warning of the potential consequence that would befall them and their posterity. Now listen, Satan being the deceiver that he is, manipulated Eve with a lie that God was trying to deprive them of something. He provoked Eve with the lie that God knew that if they ate of the forbidden tree, that they would become just like God. The, the intrigue and temptation of this lie was more than Eve could handle. She, along with Adam, uh, fell together into a state of sin, which separated them from God. Now, <clears throat> God had made the earth for his man, Adam, and Eve. God gave them authority and rulership over the earth. They, in fact, were made to be, quote unquote, the God of this world. Everything that happened on the earth was filtered through Adam and Eve. They were in charge and were deputized by God to keep and to guard uh, the garden. Now, on the day uh, that Adam and Eve sinned against God, they lost their relationship with God. They turned over the authority given to them by Almighty God to Satan, who then became the God, lowercase g, of this world and its system. Ever since then, Satan has been stealing, killing, and destroying people's lives. He has been doing this systematically, generation by generation. Uh, let's talk about the thief who steals. Now, like many today, I was completely unaware of who this spiritual foe was. I became, I became aware of his evil works in our lives after I was born again. Jesus revealed him as the quote unquote thief who came to steal, kill, and destroy in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. That's from the English Standard Version. The term thief here is very interesting because it is the Greek word klepto from where we get the English word kleptomaniac. It is a picture of the cutting art of thievery. Specifically, it refers to the almost stealth-like artistry of the pickpocket. Recently, I had a good friend tell me uh, that he had been robbed by a pickpocket in New York City while taking care of some business there. This bandit stole his wallet with his money, bank cards, and identification in it. A skillful pickpocket is almost never seen, and you usually don't realize something has been stolen until hours later. This was the cause with my friend. This perfectly describes our unseen enemy, the devil, he is ripping people off left and right, mostly because people are unaware of his presence and his prowess. Satan is a neurotic thief who can't help but give in to his impulse to steal from people. Amen? Like any good uh, thief, he would never just barge in uh, like a purse snatcher because people would see it and could identify him. So what does he, what he does, he does covertly so he won't be recognized. 
make a decision today and change any thoughts that says God is stealing uh, any, uh, is stealing any person or thing from your life. Friend, God is not a thief. Now, the second thing Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, it says the devil will try to do is to kill. The word does not mean to murder or to take someone's life. The Greek word thuo means to literally sacrifice. It referred to the sacrificial giving of animals on the altar. It also carries the meaning of, quote, surrendering or giving up something that is very precious and dear to your heart. Again, this word has nothing to do with killing in terms of murdering someone. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. Let me just move this down here. I believe, and this is what I believe, and I want to be clear about this here. I believe that what Jesus was revealing here is whatever Satan was unable to steal from you, he will then try to convince you to abandon or to sacrifice. Listen to this, uh, to abandon or to sacrifice uh, or to give up the things that you hold valuable and precious. I'm going to ask you, have you ever been in that place? When I was in middle school, I discovered a great level of immaturity and feelings of jealousy toward those who did well. I remember joining my junior high school soccer team. Uh, we had a new coach who took a shine on me, and during uh, the preseason practices, he started me as a midfielder and allowed me to play most of the games. My skills were finally being recognized, and I was delighted. Some of my teammates, though, weren't as thrilled as me and began to ride me with the label of being the coach's pet. After each practice, I would be riddled with those words until I just couldn't take it anymore. It so bothered me that I remember taking a fateful walk upstairs to the coach's office after a particular practice. Sitting down with him, I suggested that he not show me so much favor anymore and shouldn't feel compelled to play me as much in the games. Deep inside, I was hoping uh, that he would help me by telling me not to listen uh, to criti the criticisms of others, uh, but he never did. That season, I don't think I played more than two minutes total in all of the games. I allowed other people's jealousy to play uh, a mind game uh, with me and then did something I have regretted ever since. I sacrificed, listen to me, I sacrificed an opportunity I actually qualified for in my coach's eyes. This is a classic example of how the devil can work through other people to pressure you uh, into, a, into giving up or sacrificing something you ordinarily would never sacrifice. Both Christians and non-Christians alike have the same spiritual enemy. Satan, my friend, is no respecter of persons. He is an equal opportunity destroyer and is bent on taking from you your God-planned destiny. See, his primary tactics are lies and deceptions. And by them, listen to me, he desires to bring you to a place where you will forfeit what rightfully belongs to you. Now, listen to me right now. I'm Pastor Michael J. Burns. We're not done. We're going to get back to reading here in uh, just a minute here. But I wanted to make reference to a couple of things here in the midway point of this broadcast and I want to just say, if you're a pastor and you're watching me right now, uh, I want to come to your church. And I want to bring my seminar that God gave me based on my two books, uh, Discover the Life You Were Born to Live and Your Companion Study Guide, full of questions with fill in the blanks, true to false, and multiple choice. And this is a four-hour seminar on Saturdays that we do, and have had crazy success in churches where we've done this. And I want to bring this to your church, glory to God. And I believe if we do, when we do, 
uh, that uh, your people will be highly blessed. It costs only $30 per person, and that $30, uh, 25 goes for the two books, and we give you back $5 to buy the lunch for the people that attend the seminar. Now, if you want to have a seminar in your church, go to mjbministries.org uh, forward slash invite and fill in the form. And if you do that and submit it, we'll be in contact with you and find out dates where this could work. Now, remember, this has to be planned at least four weeks in advance with the number of people that we are going to have in this seminar so we can make sure we have all the supplies we're going to need for that seminar. Amen. Let me also uh, mention to you that we have a uh, a live album that's available on iTunes and other digital music platforms uh, called Let Your Glory Fill This House. This is a live praise and worship recording that my wife and I, we did with our church back in Long Island, New York. And I'm telling you, these are all original songs and it will be a great blessing to you. You can download it from your favorite digital store today, and you can absolutely uh, enjoy it. I also want to say, during the break, we're going to get right back to reading from the book, uh, on Discover the Life. I want to send a free copy of my latest book to every pastor who's watching me, and I want to send it to you as a PDF file. Go to churchhappensbook.com and give your name and email address, and we'll shoot this PDF copy of the book off to you in its entirety, and it will come with a bulk ordering discount chart because I believe that once you get done reading this 48-page pocket-sized book, you'll want to have copies to give to your members and your first-time guests. So go to churchhappensbook.com, uh, and also if you're a pastor, scroll down till you see this book cover in the second image, and underneath it will say, yes, I'm a pastor. Click on that, fill your name and email, submit it, and we will send the book right off to you. And lastly, I want to just say this before we get back to the reading of the book. We want to encourage you to become our partner today. You know, we need partners here at MJB Ministries. Uh, I just sent out a, uh, an email to several friends who have been given to us uh, over the years. I mean, some of them only gave one time, but we need some help right now financially. And so if you'll go to our website, mjbministries.org forward slash giving, uh, you could put uh, your name and your giving, uh, either a one-time gift or become a regular monthly partner. Uh, and also, we have at least six different uh, uh, categories or accounts you can give to uh, for our two book projects, our music project, for missions, and for our general uh, fund that we want to be able to uh, give as well. And so we have... Uh, our monthly, also our monthly and week and our annual budget there as well. And we have, we, we need at least $800 per month just to uh, bare bones, no salaries, just to pay for the things we need to pay for. And so we've fallen short the last couple of months and we finished the year in a bit of a deficit and we don't want to do that anymore. And we don't want to do it anymore. We're asking you, uh, to, to help us. Can you say amen? All right. Let's get back to the, the teaching here that we want to do uh, from my book on chap the last chapter, chapter 16, on absolute victory. And I'm picking up here where God is not to be blamed. Now, Satan, listen, is a strategist. He has studied mankind for thousands of years and knows what works on them and what doesn't work. He recognizes different personality types and even has a part in shaping people's personalities through the kind of life experiences I had to deal with growing up. When someone laughs at the things I'm sharing here, that is the evidence that the laughing individual has fallen prey to the life and deception that says the devil doesn't exist. Strangely enough, they will acknowledge that evil exists, but forget that evil is one that is shy of D or devil. Satan is more than the personification of evil. He is the father of it. He has, he has tried to keep that idea from humankind, but thankfully Jesus exposed him uh, for who he really is, a thief who tries to steal, kill, and destroy. Now the, let's talk about the devil's 
number one strategy. Are you, are you with me here tonight? If you were the devil, <laughs> you got to stop and laugh at that. If you were the devil, what do you suppose your number one strategy would be? In my mind, I think it would be to convince people that I don't exist. Why? Because if I am successful at convincing people of that, then I can do my evil work. Come on, somebody. I can do my evil work and get people to blame God for it all. Can you say amen, somebody? Amen. <laughs> Believe me, I have seen multitudes of people blame God for something that, uh, hang on a second, let me just go, I think I went a little too far, I'm going to go up a little bit. Yeah, believe me, I have seen multitudes of people blame God for some of the most heinous things that have ever happened in life. Tragic car accidents, are you listening to me? Uh, children drowning in pools, people dying premature deaths, the loss of personal possessions, failed marriages, and the list could go on and on. Think about it. Have you ever read the small print on insurance policies? They say that this policy will be null and void for several possible reasons, including, listen to this, quote, other acts of God. Usually these other acts of God are among a list of earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, tornadoes, and hurricanes. How can a person, how can a person have confidence in a God that is performing such horrific acts in the world? I was visiting a friend whose father was dying in the hospital with cancer. He happened to be in a Catholic hospital. My friend was staying by her father's bed night and day and praying for him. On one occasion, she needed help. She needed to step out of the room for a few minutes. When she returned, there was a nun leaning over her father, speaking in to his ear these words. It's okay, mister. And he called his last, he called his last name. You just keep on suffering for the Lord. And in a few days, this will all be over. Once she heard those words, a righteous indignation rose up within her and she said, God did not do this to my father. How dare you come in here and speak that lie into my father's ear? She then demanded that this nun leave and never come back. She told me that this religious nun just looked at her with sad eyes. Can I get an email from somebody? With sad eyes. And like my friend was having a hard time uh, accepting the inevitable. When I arrived, I was able to lead her dad to the Lord Jesus, and he was gloriously born again. I also had the pleasure of leading her unsaved husband to the Lord Jesus later that night. Eventually, her dad went home to be with the Lord, but thank God he was ready. No thanks to this nun. Now, I'm going to have to stop here and pick up tomorrow night on, we'll talk about the thief who destroys. And you're not going to want to miss that because it's going to be exceptional. And I'm looking forward to getting into that uh, with you, my friends. Praise God. Let me turn this music back on. And I want to encourage you to visit our website here at mjbministries.org. All kinds of free audios are linked to our YouTube channel with over 400 free videos. We have also our e-newsletter sign up, the archives of our, of our past newsletters, which we encourage you to, to get and enjoy, praise God. And then, of course, we have ways that you can you can give and support our ministry. Earlier, I mentioned to you about becoming a partner with us, not only in prayer, which is vital. We give you a list of prayer points, as well as we will show you how we will be praying for you. And then number two, ways you can give, different accounts we have for our book projects, our music project, our missions, uh, our monthly annual budget, uh, and other things as well there. So I want to encourage you to become a partner with MJB Ministries. My name is Michael 
John Burns. That's the MJB. And we have a ministry. My wife and I pastored for 35 years in Long Island, New York, left there in 2018 and have entered this new phase of ministry. And we would really, really appreciate you joining with us in Jesus' name. Don't forget, we hold this four-hour Saturday seminar in churches where we are invited. And we'd love to come and hold this four-hour Saturday morning seminar. It's $30 per person, which is $25 for the two books you see on the screen. And then $5 of that 30 we give back to the host church to provide the lunch that the people will enjoy during the seminar. And so we're very excited about this. We've had great success with it, and we want to bring that same kind of success and add value to your church, helping your people understand who they are, what they have, what they can do in and through Christ, and to add to what you're already putting in the pastor. And so if you want to invite me to come, go to mjbministries.org forward slash invite. That's mjbministries.org forward slash invite. And then, of course, as we come for this Saturday seminar, we would ask you to perfectly consider having us speak Sunday morning in your services, and then Sunday night hold a great miracle and healing rally. As many of you know, I was healed of seven strokes in three parts of my brain. And my wife, as a 13-year-old girl, also received a great creative miracle. Also, for pastors, if you are a pastor, whether you're bivocational or full-time, I want to send you a free PDF copy of my newest book, Church Happens. Go to churchhappensbook.com. Uh, and then when you go there, scroll down, you'll see the second image of this book on the screen. Now, under the second image, you will say, yes, I'm a pastor. Click on that, put in your name and your email address. And I'm telling you, uh, you will be greatly, uh, greatly blessed by it. Praise God. And so uh, we'll send it to you. And once you read this 48-page pocket-sized book, I want you to order uh, actual copies and use the discount chart that we're going to send to you for book ordering. And I want to send it to you uh, free of charge as a PDF file. And that book ordering chart will help you to know how you can order co copies of this book uh, for, for the members of your church and your first-time guests. Don't also forget that we have a live praise and worship app I told you about earlier called It Your Glory for This House, all original songs. And uh, I want you to go to iTunes. It's available only in a digital format. You can get it from iTunes or any other digital music platform, and you can enjoy this live praise and worship experience with all kinds of all new songs and spontaneous worship. I'm telling you, this will make a difference in your life. Praise God forevermore. Well, we love you all so very, very much, and we thank you for joining us today. And we're going to see you tomorrow on Tuesday as we continue reading from my book, Discover the Life You Are Born to Live, Chapter 16 on Absolute Victory. We love you so much. God bless each and every one of you today. And we thank you for being with us here in Jesus' name. And we want to just say that we love you and that God loves you and that Jesus, of course, is head of the church and he is Lord. Praise God. Thank you.